Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. My name is Uni Lee and I am a culinary instructor, chef, a multidisciplinary artist, a homesteader at heart, a lover of trees, and once in a while the plants speak to me. So I'm here to tell, talk to you about one of my favorite plants called mugwort. Now I just wanted to make sure you guys know that anything that I introduce you to is for inspiration and for further investigation and doesn't constitute medical advice but because I have such a strong belief system in the power of plant you might feel that what I'm saying is uh, gonna resonate with you or is important to you and just so that you know that if you decide to taste it fresh it's not gonna harm you but just to be mindful of how you use it and in what quantities you take. Okay, so I'm in suburban Delaware right now. Uh, kind of migrated out of New York City for the moment. And although it might appear that there is just a bunch of manicured grass and um, in fact, there's a lot of treasures hidden among the, the grounds. So, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite herbs called mugwort. Its official Latin name is Artemisia vulgaris. And Artemisia vulgaris really does refer to the Greek goddess of agriculture. Um, and in Chinese folklore, the goddess of life and death is uh, wearing a shield of mugwort. She's actually robed in mugwort. Um, so this is for thousands and thousands of years we've been using this plant. This plant has been evolving along with us. So in its evolution, it's also developed a lot of compounds that keep it healthy. Um, some of the compounds are actually antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral. Uh oh, virus, I said viral. Yes, it's gonna help you during this time if you learn how to use it wisely. So among some of these other plants that we have here, for instance, the mustard, these sword-like beauties are gonna become lilies of which you can eat the flowers. Um, there's some mugwort growing on the ground as well. And um, I want to show you how to really be able to find them with some measure of confidence. So let's go past this Japanese maple as we go around to the side of the house okay. to learn how to ID the plant. Say hello, where are you? What do you look like? What do you smell like? How do you even feel? Okay, IDing the mugwort. It's a perennial plant, so even if I pick some of this now, even all of this now, it's going to grow back next year. It's very prolific and it is grows almost everywhere in the world. Um, it has these uh, dark green leaves. They're deeply lobed, so they're very striated and kind of like sword-like. The leaves itself are alternating on the stem. So here's one stem, here's another stem, um, or another leaf rather. And then since I mentioned the stem, uh, sometimes it has a reddish or purplish tint to it. Its most distinctive feature is the underside of the mugwort. So let's go upside down. Yes, the silvery hue of the mugwort is a really important distinguishing feature of the plant. So mugwort is related to daisy fam. In the daisy family, it's related to chrysanthemums and its closest kin is a herb called wormwood. I don't know if you've heard of wormwood, but they still distill wormwood to make the alcohol called absinthe. And absinthe is a hallucinogen. So um, just be mindful, there is some active strong compounds in this plant. Uh, we're going to take this opportunity to uh, 
kind of look at the base of it. It has a very strong root system that grows out of these crackly rocks. These are kind of young plants. They've been growing for about a month and change now, but in another two months or so, they're gonna be tall, about five feet tall. And that's usually when the harvesting happens. Um, in some Asian cultures, um, you might go to the ocean or to the river or something like that and pick very, very young leaves. I don't know. The camera person is laughing right, right now and I'm not sure what to do. Anyway, Keep going. we are going to pull one so you can look at it. Ah, and as I do this, it's releasing um, a potpourri of aromatic smells. It smells a lot like anise. Um, I think it smells mostly like sage. And in its application, you would use it anywhere where there's like a very strong <laughs> herb overnote. <laughs> okay. Here, in among these rocks, if I pull close to the, to the root, I might even pull out some of the root. There you go. Um, and the root and the stem can be used separately to make teas and such. Okay, uh, let's pull another one. If you want the mugwort to keep on coming back, you don't, oh, here's a great root. Um, if you want the mugwort to keep coming back, you would pull it more from the top as it gets older. And the best time to uh, pick mugwort to dry it for teas and to make smudge sticks out of it. Yes, you can make your own smudge sticks is when they are taller and they start to flower. And when they flower, they have this very inconspicuous flowers. So the flowers are quite small and they grow in a long row. Um, you won't notice it until you really slow down and look at it. So I'm so excited to talk to you more about the various properties of mugwort, how that it might help you in your ailments, how it might give you a sense of protection actually during this time when um, everything out there seems bad for you. And, um, and you can, moreover, using it as a flavoring in food is a remarkable, um, <laughs> it's a remarkable way to use the herb because it's like beyond organic, it's actually wild and free. And it's free in terms of monetary costs and the ways that it grows. So I'm gonna show you just one other little bit of the mugwort. And here's the babies. And in Korean culture and Japanese culture and some Asian cultures, they use these small ones for um, making cakes and grinding down to color mochi into a, a green color that has an aromatic herby quality to it. So, are you guys ready? Let's go!